So in this segment, we're going to be talking about how the UK pensions funds almost went into a full financial meltdown last week. If it wasn't for the Bank of England's um, intervention, I'll be trying to explain it a bit um, here. So an investment strategy used by UK pension funds to protect themselves from falling yields in the government's bond market has been blamed. So what's happened is the yields have gone up um, because the government wants to make the bonds more attractive. So therefore paying more interest on them uh, creates more of a need for, for um, more of a desire for people to purchase them because the issue is that the bonds are not worth as much because people are selling them because they don't have any faith in the UK market. They're selling the UK bonds and buying, I think, American bonds because the interest rates are higher and the returns are um, therefore better. And also the American ones are a bit more stable. Uh, stable. So um, so they talk about the strategy called LDI. It's not too important now, um, but these um, firms that manage the uh, pensions, essentially the pensions liabilities, were uh, forced to post more collateral when UK when prices for UK sovereign bonds, known as gilts, collapsed suddenly, driven largely by their own selling. So people were selling them because they didn't have any faith in it. They wanted to put their money elsewhere. Um, that prompted the Bank of England to step in to prevent a death spiral of the system. So they talk about what's um, limited driven investment, all of this stuff. It's not too important. The important bits are what's caused the blow up, a sudden enormous moving government bond yields, while pension funds and investment managers have liquid assets and cash that they can use to prop up their collateral when yields rise. So they have to put up collateral when they want to borrow money. They usually have several days or weeks to make the payments, but in the past few days, yields rose so sharply that managers had to come up with cash in a number of hours. So the yields rose um, as people lost more and more faith, I think, in the bonds. I'm no financial expert here, so I could be wrong on some of this stuff. Um, but the yields rose and the kind of demand for uh, bonds went down. And what that meant is there was more supply of bonds, which further pushed the price down. And so these firms that have loans based on bonds as collateral, the banks and the lenders were asking them, you know, what are you going to do? You're going to have to put more collateral because it's not worth as much as it was. Many pension funds didn't have enough spare cash to meet the margin calls, so went to their next uh, most liquid assets, gilts, with funds typically holding a lot of the longer term inflation linked variety because there is a difference between bonds and um, gilts. It's very confusing, I know. With so many selling these gilts at the same time to meet the demands, they push yields higher and in turn increase the collateral payments they had to make. The Bank of England stepped in. So it was basically a death spiral of people selling, you know, these things, gilts and um, bonds because they were worth less and less money because people lost faith in them. And so the lenders were asking, the lenders to these pension funds were asking, um, you know, you need to put up more collateral. So they had to keep selling more and more gilts and bonds to come up with the liquid cash in order to put up more collateral which in turn increased the collateral payments they had to make, the Bank of England had to step in. So is this a bailout? Yes. Because what the Bank of England did is they bought up a load of the bonds. It's well into the billions. People dispute the figures. Um, some people are saying it's around 65 billion. Some are saying it's 10. Um, I think it's up to 65 billion the bank will purchase. Um, but, you know, it's a very dangerous situation because the bank has effectively had to bail out these companies that have held on to bonds and gilt. You know, the uh, Washington Post saying it is, in a sense, a bailout. It's helped pension funds out of a tricky um, liquidity situation by reversing the bond sell-off and need to post collateral. So essentially, they've stabilized the price of the bonds and the gilt so that they're worth a bit more. Therefore, the companies won't have to sell off the gilt to make liquid cash in order to have more collateral, if that makes sense. So it stops the death spiral and therefore it stops them selling because the price is a bit more stable now. Rather, it eats the need to sell off the assets at unfavorable prices to maintain their hedges. This was particularly true given some pension programs invest in illiquid assets such as real estate. If they were forced to sell those assets quickly, it could spark problems because they wouldn't be worth much because illiquid assets means they're very uh, they're a bit more tricky to get rid of. And the fact is the government are looking at deregulating these kind of funds in order to make it so that these kind of pension companies, these insurance companies um, and other kind of similar ones can buy illiquid assets, you know, things like wind farms and probably um, housing. And therefore, if that was the situation now, the situation we have now would be way worse. Um, further to that, and kind of a further explanation is that, this from Robert Peston, is that the these um, gilts and bonds are largely leveraged funds, which means that when they buy the gilts, the pension companies, they frequently use them as collateral to raise more cash in what's known as the repo market. They then use that cash, so the cash that they've leveraged, I think it's around up to three times to three to five times they can leverage it to get more cash. So they'll say have a thousand pounds worth of bonds, they'll leverage that at three x, so they'll get three grand out of it. Then they'll um, get more bonds, and then they'll leverage that, and so on and so on. And it's like a it's like a house of cards in a sense. 
um, now the risk raising money in the same way is that when the value of the collateral collapses, which it has done with the crash in gilt prices, the funds have to somehow find cash either to repay the money they borrowed or pledge more in collateral because their collateral isn't worth as much. And that's what's caused this effective death spiral um, with the pension funds. And had the Bank of England not stepped in, a lot of these um, pension companies would have become insolvent and put a lot of people's pensions at risk. Um, and you're talking a really dangerous situation here. You got um, this is when you know the other problem is the currency drop, which I think further impacted um, bond prices. Again, I'm not an expert in this. Um, I was showing this video during my live stream, but um, and I just find it really funny yeah. how he just runs away. The turmoil on the markets this morning, sir. He just he just runs away. He doesn't speak. Goes to his office because I think if he spoke there, he would have been in big trouble. Because in the words of Jose Mourinho, I prefer really not to um, not to speak. If I speak, I am in, in big trouble, in big trouble, and I don't want to be in big trouble. This is probably one of my favorite quotes I of prefer all time. The genuinely best. And, um, you know, this is on top of the government have you turned on their tax policy now, but the UK's debt's unsustainable if sweeping tax cuts go ahead, warn the IFS. So the government have backed down on the 45p tax cut, but this is on the back of showing why there was so much uncertainty last in the last couple of weeks, which is because of Kwarteng's mini budget on the 24th of September, I think it was, he did the mini budget, he promised a load of unfunded tax cuts, which um, they would, there was no way, you know, the UK was going to grow from the situation and loads of, uh, there it is there, look, the 45% 45 ta tax cut U-turn. And um, investors probably thought that there's no way that the UK is actually going to grow their economy, the, the investment's not going to be worth anything, because at the end of the day, if you invest money somewhere, you want it to make a return. And in the global market, you have so many options and the UK aren't as, um, as as stable as we were, you know, in in years gone by. You got Mushtaq Rahman, you know, great guy, a great person, saying EU side now very concerned at the contagion risk the UKG's financial actions opposed to financial stability in the eurozone. Plenty of euro area banks and insurance firms are exposed to UK guilt. This is serious. Commission are very worried. The IMF is worried. The White House is worried because a lot of these kind of banks, a lot of these financial institutions have investments with UK bonds. And so if the bond prices collapses, it can cause these investment firms, these insurance companies, massive issues. And had the Bank of England not stepped in here, it might have forced, you know, maybe the, the Eurozone to consider bailouts of some of these companies, potentially, maybe even some of these American companies as well, depending on how exposed they they were and how exposed they still are. You know, the EU, the White House might be telling these companies, you, you just time to get get the hell out, dog, because this ain't worth it anymore. You're putting yourselves in a very dangerous financial situation. Um, the FT, so UK pension schemes are, are dumping stocks and bonds to raise cash and seeking bailouts from their corporate backers. So the Bank of England did stabilise it. Um, but the fact is that they're still dumping stocks and bonds. So they're still forcing the bond prices down because there's a massive sell-off happening because I don't think these pension companies have faith in the in the UK bonds. I think that that's a really fundamental issue, especially when the government are borrowing so much money. Um, you know, someone's going to have to you know buy these bonds and these gilts, etc., in order to help fund the government. And if they're not buying it, it causes problems. Um, the interest rates, the yields go up. They're around, or I think, five percent, which is I think one of the highest in Europe, or the highest in Europe. Which again, it's great if you're an investor looking to make a return on it. But if you don't have a lot of faith in the government, I mean, there's a very unlikely chance the UK will default. But if you don't have a lot of faith in these things, then it's not really going to work out. Um, there's a, a bit more I want to talk about the UK watchdog dogs hold crisis talks over um to avert uh, guilt cliff edge so effectively they are um, having crisis talks about the fall of kind of guilt prices which is a huge fundamental issue for the government these are more long-term um you know long-term i think assets where you know, they'll pay a, um, a slightly higher yield but um these are over you know more than five years for example again i'm not a financial expert here but these are more i think guilts are more long-term than bonds in the uk context you got this uh, from janice harry a line saying a senior tory tells me trust is finished and lots of letters are going in letters of no confidence but they don't wholly blame the budget we they're saying we are angry because they are um, s expletive did not roll the pitch and cannot communicate the strategy so public feel frightened instead of reassured so effectively what they're saying is the problem isn't the tax cuts it's themselves it's the fact that the government didn't market it properly which i really really aggressively disagree with we know trickle down economics doesn't work and doing a tax cut like that now just a bad idea regardless of how much marketing they've done for it i don't think it would ever have gone down well um this is from uh, last week so um, it, you know, Kwateng's uh, mini budget wasn't, it didn't come with an OBR forecast, which is a huge problem because if you're an investor trying to figure out, is it worth investing in this, in these bonds, gilts or UK stocks, for example, um, 
you're not going to feel too confident. So um, Kwateng's mini budget was not accompanied by a forecast from the OBR, something which helped fuel market turmoil because they don't know how the returns are actually going to work, which is a huge problem. Um, the Bank of England, um, the pound slumped against the dollar and the Bank of England was forced to spend 65 billion. Some people try and refute that figure. It seems like it's accurate. The Bank of England spent around 65 billion in order to stabilize the bond market, which um, con especially considering that they still refuse, Kwateng and Trust still refuse to publish the OBR figures, the forecasts, um, shows you they haven't learnt much, but they have U-turned over the um, over the 45p tax cut, which is which is a good thing that they've kind of been bullied into it, especially when they thought that Tory MPs weren't going to back it, which definitely looked like it could happen. You know, Kwateng to keep expert OBR budget verdict for, secret for two months, that, that OBR forecast is only going to come out when he announces his full budgetary plans in November, which is a joke, in my opinion, because this guy's a joke. Um, you know, the city fears Kwateng's tax cuts may be anti-growth. So the people who probably benefit from this the most, you know, the city of London, the financial people, they're saying this stuff's a bad idea and it's not going to grow the economy. Um, which shows you that even the even the city don't have a ton of faith in borrowing for tax cuts. They might believe in trickle-down economics, but they don't believe maybe that you should base that, you know, borrow money to do a tax cut. It doesn't make sense. Um, there's a few more things I wanted to talk about. Um, Pensions watchdog called into emergency talks. We've mentioned that bit before. You know, Sunak was right about trustonomics. It doesn't work. You know, doomster Rishi Sunak was right about it because he warned about this during the leadership elections. You can't borrow to do tax cuts. And, you know, Liz Truss was like, oh, oh, the doomerism and all of this, you know, I believe this will work. You know, yeah, sure, mate. You can believe you can fly. You jump out that window on the 10th story, you're going to hit the ground pretty hard. You'd be DOA. Honestly, just this whole belief culture, this whole Brexit mentality of, oh, I can do anything, I'm British. It, just, it needs to go, honestly. Um, there's a couple more things I wanted to talk about here, which is Kwateng essentially U-turning on it. That was uh, this morning, Monday morning on the 3rd, but this is trust the day before. Committed to abolishing the 45 pence tax rate for the wealthiest people in the country. Yes. And, you know, the pound has gone up. Um, a bit. The pound has gone up because of uh, Kwateng kind of announcing that the... Uh, rate won't happen the tax cut won't happen but all they're doing is creating a lot of instability with the pound that's a huge problem um, if you're looking at trading with the UK because you're going to have to constantly monitor currency fluctuations if you're looking to export or import um, that's a that's a big issue because it, it could they could charge us more for for uh, imports or exports um, or pay less for exports purely because of the pound fluctuations it's a lot more effort to calculate um, you know the conversions and things like that so, I, I mean, I could be waffling here at this point, I don't know, but um, the bit that really frustrated me was this actually got snuck past everyone, which is Quatton confirms another, uh, confirms further cuts up to £18 billion pounds for public services. So that'll be, you know, things like councils, that's going to be things like um, hospitals, schools, and all of those sorts of things. £18 billion pounds cut in these things, and it's just... Honestly, it's madness that they were going to do a tax cut for the richest people in society, and even then they were still going to cut the um, services that people rely on honestly this this lot need to go we need to get rid of a lot of them absolute bunch of the biggest use uh, biggest bunch of most useless people in any government i'm sorry this one's a bit more unscripted um it's a bit tougher to uh to do i think it's just a lot longer and a lot more to talk about here but the uk in a very uk in a very precarious position right now and um there's a lot of these traders are going to make a lot of money especially if they know what's coming ahead of time if anyone knew this morning that uh Kwateng was going to u-turn on the 45p tax cut they could have made a lot of money as the pound rallies if you bet on the pound then you can make some money there um it's just it's just so frustrating beyond belief but um anyways let me know what you think in the comments below like comment share subscribe support the channel on patreon if you can and hopefully i'll see you in the next one